it's been a while since we've had our video. Uh, if you're watching this, it's safe to say that you have survived your first celebration of learning. Uh, we are still finding confetti in the room because it was quite a celebration. Uh, really, really proud of the way you guys have handled yourselves over the last two days in Mount mouth, not mouth, math. Um, I see you guys taking your time. I see you guys using strategies. I see you guys using your resources. So those are all wonderful, wonderful things. Um, we are going to get into lesson nine and lesson nine uh, will bring with it, uh, we're going to start adding decimals. We are going to start off um, adding the decimals using the place value chart and really connecting that with our place value reasoning. And then we're going to go ahead and connect that to more of um, like the formal, um, I guess we're not, we're not going to be using a, the formal algorithm, algorithm quite yet, but we're going to be connecting our work in lesson nine to kind of where we're going using a typical algorithm. Um, so we're just really going to think about place value. We're going to think about what the difference is between hundredths and tenths. We're going to see sometimes uh, those place values get crowded and what uh, the outcome of that will be. So let's take a look at some examples. Okay kiddos, here we are. Uh, we are in lesson nine. Doo -doo -doo. And today is nine. Sorry, I have this strange, I don't want that. I have this Strange, is this it? I'm French. Study stroke, the stroke. I have this strange tool, there we go, on my program that I don't necessarily want. But thank you very much. It's still doing it. I don't want that. Okay. Um, we are, as I said in our intro, we are working on adding decimals, and it is very, very exciting. We're going to model that so we can really have a very deep understanding of what this conceptually looks like. Um, are you guys so impressed with my very straight lines? I'm very impressed. Sorry that I didn't have room to properly label these place values, but we have ones, tenths, hundredths, and thousandths. My, I lost, I did not have enough room for my S's, so they dropped below the line there. Um, what we're going to look at here, you guys, is actually uh, some modeling. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. Let's look at this one first. And, oh yeah, I was going to say, I found a new tool so that I can have these beautiful, make these beautiful place value charts with straight lines. You don't have to look at my quote unquote straight lines anymore. Now it has actually straight lines and I'm, that's very exciting for me. Okay, so let's look at two tenths plus six tenths. What we're actually going to do, you guys, is we're going to model that. So we have two tenths. Well, that's what two tenths looks like. And now let's look at six tenths. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Two tenths plus six tenths. When we add two tenths and with six tenths, what do we end up with? Well, let's just count our dots. We have one, two, or let's count our tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Beautiful. So two tenths plus six tenths is equal to eight tenths. Very cool. Very, very simple. Whenever we start some new concepts, we start very simply and then it becomes uh, more and more complicated. Uh, uh, okay, so we worked on that one. Now we're going to work on this one. Two ones, three thousandths, plus six ones and one thousandth. So we're going to model each of these in a different color and then we're going to see what we end up with. So let's show on our place value chart, let's show what two ones looks like. No problem, Mrs. C, two ones. Keep in mind, you guys, you do have to do one of these problems in your notebook. So we have two ones and three thousandths. Okay, I can handle that. We have nothing in tenths and nothing in hundredths. I'm just going to leave those blank to represent the fact that we have nothing. Now let's look at six ones. And one thousand. So we're adding two ones and three thousandths together with six ones and one thousandths. So now we have one, this is in our pink, two, three, four, five, six, and then one thousandth. And then look, let's look at our final sum. So what color have I not used yet? French. Let's see what we have in our ones. Let's just add up our ones. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ones. 
beautiful. And then we have how many thousandths? One, two, three, four thousandths. So we have zero tenths. Go ahead and move. We have zero hundredths. This is exactly how we're going to be modeling in lesson nine. Uh, so we have eight ones, we have zero tenths, zero hundredths, and four thousandths. Um, two ones and three thousandths plus six ones and one thousandths is equal to eight and four thousandths. Pretty cool, huh, guys? Okay, okay. Now let's look at this one, you guys. Let's look at our third problem here. We're looking at two tenths and five thousandths plus six hundredths. So we're going to model each of these and then we'll find the sum. So we have two tenths, we have one. We're going to show in the tenths place value what two tenths looks like. There we have one, two tenths. And now we have five thousandths. One, two, three, four, five. Let's try to make our rows of five at the most. That'll come in handy in a few minutes here. So we have two tenths uh, and five thousandths. We have nothing in hundredths right now, so we're just going to leave that space empty. Um, these are good Halloween colors. Now we're going to model what six hundredths looks like. I'm just going to put that here. Again, let's try to make rows of five. I know I wasn't doing that in previous problems. I got too excited about all my new fanciness. Uh, so we have six hundredths, we have one, two, three, four, five, six hundredths. Okay, so now we're looking for a final sum. Sum, keep in mind, is the answer to an addition problem. We're adding two tenths and five thousandths, or I should say, yeah, two tenths and five thousandths uh, with six hundredths. So let's see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and add up what we have in tenths. Uh, before we do that, let's bring down a decimal. So what do we have in the tenths column? Oh, we just have two tenths. What do we have in, a, in the hundredths column? We just have those six green hundredths. And then in the thousandths column, we have the five orange thousandths. So two tenths, Two tenths and five thousandths uh, plus six hundredths is equal to two hundred sixty-five thousandths. Pretty cool, huh, guys? It was, we are going to take a look at a few more examples. Uh, here we have uh, 1.8 plus 13 tenths. We are going to continue to model this down here. Um, However, I think a few of you are realizing pretty quickly that these two numbers are in two different languages. This 1.8 is in standard form, and this 13 tenths is in unit form. So before we get any further, let's go ahead and make sure that these numbers are in uh, the same language. So we have 1.8 plus 1.3, or 13 tenths. What we're going to do, you guys, is we're going to model these numbers down on our place value chart. Let's go ahead and model 1.8 in blue. So 1.8 consists of 1, 1, and 8 tenths. Again, when we're modeling, let's strive to have rows of 5. That will come in really handy here in just a couple of minutes. We have 5, 6, 7, 8. 1.8 plus 1.3, we're going to show on the place value chart what 1.3 looks like. And 1.3 consists of 1, 1, and 3 tenths. Okay, very cool. Now what we need to do is we need to add them up and analyze what our sum is. Okay, so let's just add them up one column at a time. 1, 1 plus 1, 1 uh, is two ones. Put that decimal. Now we have eight tenths plus three tenths. Well, eight plus uh, eight plus three is eleven. Here we have an issue. We can only have one digit per column. We cannot have two digits in the tenths column. What we're going to need to do, you guys, is to cash in ten tenths for one ones. Ten tenths is equal to one. So what we're going to do is cash in, we're going to lasso up 10 tenths and transfer it for one one because we cannot have two digits in one column. So let's go ahead and lasso up 10 of our tenths. We have 10 tenths and we're going to cash them in for one one. So they are no longer tenths, they have been lassoed up and cashed in for one one. So now 
let's go ahead. Oh, I was trying to strike a line through that. Now let's see what our sum is. Now, after we cashed in our 10 tenths for one one, we have three ones and one tenth. We cannot have two digits in one column. We cannot have two digits in one place value. It, when you find yourself in the unfortunate position uh, where you have two digits in one column, you must cash in uh, and transfer them over to the left. Um, pretty cool stuff. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Here, look at the second one, second problem here. We have 100 eight hundredths, interesting, plus two ones and four hundredths. So let's go ahead and model this first section in purple. One hundred, interesting, it looks like Mrs. C is going to have to add to our place value chart. Excuse me. One hundred, dark. Okay, we have ten. And then I'm just going to put 100 here. Okay, so in purple we have 100 and 8 hundredths. Pay attention to those THs. They make a huge difference. Plus, so we have 100 with 8 hundredths added to... Why do I keep getting a terrible brown? My goodness. I need like a nice fresh orange. Okay, great. Lakers covers. Uh, now we're going to add this to an orange. I'm going to be doing doing the modeling in orange. Oh, Mrs. C, silly. We're not writing the digits. We're modeling. Where's that purple? We're modeling. One hundred looks like this. Eight hundredths looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Terrific. Okay, so we have that modeled in purple, and now we're going to model two ones in our orange. One, two, so it's two ones and four hundredths. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now we have everything modeled. Now let's take a look and see what our sums are in each column. Be critical of potentially uh, problematic situations where we might have more than one digit um, in a column. So let's go ahead and see how many hundreds we have. Well, we have 100. I have zero tens. We have one, two ones, a decimal point. We have zero tenths. And then we have, uh-oh, we have eight plus four. We have 12 hundredths. And then zero, zero, zero. Okay, so we have two digits. What happens when we have two digits and one place value? Well, in your guys' ultimate, um, yeah, in your ultimate wisdom, you know that we cannot have two digits and one place value. We're going to have to relocate these hundredths, lasso up these hundredths, 10 of them, because on the place value chart, everything works by powers of 10. We're going to cash in these 10 hundredths for one tenth, because, Ten hundredths is equal to one tenth. Ten. We took ten hundredths and we cashed them in for one tenth. They are no longer hundredths. They are now living their best life as one tenth. Okay. So now let's go ahead and rewrite this number. Let's make sure that we're not in any more trouble from this. Um. Sorry about. Okay. I'm going to, sorry that this is a little um, confusing, but let's go ahead and see what we have in each place value. I have 100, I have zero tens, I have two ones, I have one tenth now, and we have two hundredths. Very cool stuff. So let's go ahead and write our final sum. Why did my, oh, I switched my pencil. I was wondering why that was so thin. Let's go ahead and write our final number, our final sum as 102 and 12 hundredths. Pretty cool stuff, huh guys? We'll look at one more here. Look at one final problem. We have uh, 148 thousandths. Well, you guys know that we only allow one digit per column. 
So let's think about what 148 thousandths actually looks like. 148 thousandths, and I'm going to write the digits here, actually looks like this. One tenth, four hundredths, eight thousandths. 148 thousandths, keep in mind that the final digit dictates how the number is going to be um, classified. So we have 148 thousandths, okay? Let's go ahead and model and see what that looks like here. So we have one tenth, okay, I can handle that. We have four hundredths, beautiful, I can count to four, that's my lucky day. And we have eight thousandths. And keep in mind, let's do rows of five if you can fit them. So we have one tenth, four hundredths, eight thousandths. And then we are adding to that splendid number, burgundy, seven ones and thirteen thousandths. Okay, so in burgundy, we have seven ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm, tricky. We have thir I'll write it down here. We have thirteen thousandths. Keep in mind we can only allow one digit per, per place value. And that final oh no, I'm running out of battery. That final digit dictates how the number is going to be classified. So here we have thirteen thousandths. Let's see what that looks like as far as our modeling goes. It's going to be one hundredth and then one two, three thousandths. Um, uh. Let's go ahead now and add up each column and see what we have. So in our ones column, we have seven. In our tenths column, don't forget to bring down the decimal. In our tenths column, we have one tenth. In our hundredths column, we have five hundredths. And then our thousandths column, we have eight plus three, which is eleven. We cannot have two digits in one column. What do we do when we're faced with a situation like this? Well, all don't panic. All you need to do is lasso up ten. Speaking of which, our secret word is lasso. Secret word is lasso because when we have more than one digit in a place value, all we have to do is lasso up a bundle of ten and cash them in. So I have ten thousandths being cashed in for one hundredth. Okay, and we have this lonely cowboy down there. Again, secret word is lasso. Now let's think about what we have. I'm just gonna draw a line because technically. This is not, it's not incorrect, but this certainly is not the way that we're going to write our final answer. Now let's see what we have in each place value. So I still have seven ones, still bring down that decimal. I have one tenth. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six hundredths, because we took a bundle of, th one bundle of thousandths, and we're left with one thousandth. So our final sum here, you guys, is seven and one hundred sixty-one Thousands. Keep in mind this last digit dictates how we're going to categorize uh, that number. Cool. So fabulous. I can't wait, wait to work with you guys on this tomorrow. This is really fun doing this modeling. Uh, have a great night and I will see you guys on Wednesday.